Good morning. Everybody good? Glad to be at church. We are, uh, we are in week five of our series called Love on Purpose. And uh, anytime we get to celebrate baptisms, that's always a great time at church. And so we're super glad that we got to celebrate those and, and actually have those happen here at Real Life Church. Be thankful that you're part of a church that's seeing that happen. Uh, I mention this often. The national average of baptisms in evangelical churches is three a year. And uh, we, we just have been super blessed to see God move in mighty way here at Real Life Church and uh, be able to have those continually and on a consistent basis. It's something that we prepare for weekly. We, we don't want to just assume it's not going to happen. We're going we're to err on the side of it's going to happen and uh, trust God for the results of that. So today I'm going to speak on this idea. We've been in talking about husbands and wives and relationship stuff. And today I'm going to kind of move into more of a generalized idea of loving on purpose. And I think one of the best places to start is with our mouths. How, how many of you have messed up with your mouth this week? How, how, many of you would, how many of you would say like, Pastor Vince, I have a gift of messing up with my mouth. Anybody? All right, got a, got a few people owning it, claiming it, saying, that's me. Um, this happens, and, and it can happen for a lot of reasons. Maybe it's your, your personality type where you're one of those people that's, I'm just going to say what I think no matter what it is, and, and people are just going to have to either like it or not like it. So I'm, and that's, if that's you, okay, I got no problem with that. We'll see if the Bible has a problem with it in a minute, but I have no problem with it. Um, but then, uh, then there are people that their mouths run faster than their brain. And, and this is the category in which I fall into. Um, I, they say in a marriage relationship, the woman will use 80% of the words and the man will use about 20% of the words. In my home, that is not correct. I use roughly 95% of the words and Jennifer speaks, you know, she, she throws them in where she can. But I, I talk. I talk often. I talk, I talk when no one's listening, and I don't really care if anyone's listening. And so I've had these moments, and, and one of the things that I've asked, I've asked God this since I've been pastoring, and, and I'm at 20 years now, I've been a pastor. And so I asked God at one time, I'm like, God, could I, could I just take six months off? And I want to go and I want to travel and I want to talk to pastors about times that their mouths work faster than their brain. And I want to call the book from the pulpit and just ask pastors about times they've messed up. Because I've cussed from the pulpit before. I've done all kinds of stuff. My dad, my dad one time in a sermon, and this, he tells me I can tell this story, so I'm going to give you his secrets and not my own. One time we were preaching out of Ephesians and my dad's preaching this sermon on the armor of God and he is throwing it down. Like got his Bible wadded up, smacking the pulpit with it, slobber and tears. And he is just letting it rip about the, the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, gird with the truth, and feet shod with the preparation of the gospel so that you might resist the fiery darts of Satan. Now, that's all real well and good if you preach it that way. But my dad, whose mouth was running faster than his brain, got the F and the D of fiery darts flipped around. And instead of saying fiery darts, he said diary. And right in the middle of the sermon, I had gotten trouble in that service. I had gotten busted by my mom. I was in the back carving my initials into the pew with a pocket knife. And my mom gave me the finger snap, and so I knew I had to come forward to her seat. So I'm sitting by my mom at this point, and she's got her Bible open. And she's listening, and she's, got, she's intent. She's scowling at me, but watching her Bible. And she's sitting there, and then all of a sudden, my dad just lets it, I almost said lets it rip, but that's not. <laughs> that would have been a horrible choice of words if I'd have said that. But my dad gets up there and he is preaching his face off, man. And he gets to that point. So that you may resist the diary of Satan. And I'm like, and my mom just looked up from her Bible. She tilted her head like this. And she closed her Bible and she just shook. She didn't open her Bible. She's like, and I said, Mom. She's like, no one else is listening. 
any more to what your dad has to say. And so I'm praying that one day I get an opportunity to do that because sometimes our mouth, man, we'll say some silly stuff, won't we? Any of you ever said anything absolutely ridiculous to your kids? Like when you're angry at them, you just say stuff that don't make sense? Yeah? Sit down. Get over here. And then they don't know what to do. <laughs> My kids need therapy for many times as I do that to them because I, I just, I'm like, I'm impulsive and I'm passionate and all that good stuff that the problem is sometimes it doesn't work out so well. So with our mouth, we see the Bible talks about this because now we live in a culture where, hey, anything you say can and most definitely will be brought up again later. Whether you say it verbally, out loud, whether you post it in social media, someone's going to have something to say about it. And, and we have to be real careful as believers, as those that follow Christ, which we find more important, to be heard or to be holy. Do I desire to be heard? Does that, my opinion have to be everywhere? Do, do I really need to invest important time that I won't get back? on this conversation simply so that my opinion can be heard? Eh. I'm, I'm, I'm learning this principle of just because you can doesn't mean you should. I teach this principle to my kids by asking them if they're allowed to eat the couch. I say, can you eat the couch? No. No, you, you can. There is no biblical law against eating furniture. It's not in there. You can you get after it. Start at the start at the cushion, though, because it's gonna fill you pretty quick. And, but you can eat the couch. That's dumb. I'm like, yeah. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. And a lot of times we as people we step into the just because we can, we better. When in reality, when our mouth, we're gonna find out some scripture here that's pretty straightforward. It's not like you can kind of do this or you might ought to do this, or maybe this is a good suggestion. The scripture is pretty straightforward about the power of the mouth and how we as those that call ourselves Christians should act with it. The first thing that I want, I'm going to give you a couple of scripture today and, and then I'm going to come back and give you some principles. One is something that you, you should do, just something you should do for you. And then the other thing is how you can live out this idea of making sure your mouth is used for good and not evil. And, and, and so as we get into this, I want you to kind of bear with me today and understand that I have had to walk through this myself because my mouth is my weapon. Sarcasm is my love language. I use it often. My kids have learned it. If you sat at our, man, if you sat at our Thanksgiving table with, with all the brothers there and my parents, my gosh, we are brutal to each other. And we would probably say something like, well, if you know us, then you'd know we're just messing with each other. My brother that typically comes to services, we'll be together, and I'll walk off stage or something like that, and he'll go, hey, that shirt's a little snug there, chunky, and stuff like that. You know, like, but we say it, <laughs> and, and that's great, because I've told him, I'm like, your shirt would be snug too, but you know, where you got it from, and we'll just back and forth, we're constantly ribbing each other. And so there's a difference between how you just have fun with people that you love, and then just the stuff that we pour out. Just the stuff we pour out. And that's what we have to be careful for. And you have to be careful that you don't excuse everything with a joke. I was just kidding. Because not all the time are you. And so here we go. I'm going to give you some scripture. Proverbs chat. I'm going to give you three scriptures real quick from Proverbs. Then we're going to dive in to some of these principles. This is the first one. Proverbs 18.21 says this. The tongue has the power of life and death. As the power of life and death. Now, if, you, if you're a parent here, you understand this because sometimes your teenagers will speak to you and you want to kill them, right? That's not what the verse means, just so we're clear. But we have this ability, we'll speak encouraging things or we'll speak things that will shred a child. If, you're, if you do comparison stuff, well, if you did it like this or if only you were like this, then you will destroy a person. And so you have to be real careful. Reckless words, Proverbs chapter 12 says, Reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Proverbs 15, verse 4. The tongue that brings healing is a tree of life, but a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. You ever had your spirit crushed by somebody's words? We used to say things like, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. 
That's a lie. Like whoever came with that was an idiot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not very encouraging, is it? <laughs> Thank you. Note to self. Uh, the old song, Home, Home on the Range, where the deer and the antelope play, where seldom is heard a discouraging word. We don't live there, do we? No, discouragement seems to be the par for the course. And so as we kind of, I want you to understand where we're going because when we talk about loving on purpose, uh, it's intentional. And when your mouth is being used, you better be intentional with the words that you use. It's really critical, the words that you use, the filters you put on yourself. But Pastor Vince, I'm not going to let anybody roll me over. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to say what I think. Great. You go ahead with that if you choose to. Just understand the bodies that you will leave in your wake. And sadly, it's not the bodies you don't care about, those people that you don't care about. And, and you say, Vince, we're supposed to care for everybody. I get that. Hold on. Let me just back off the, the Sunday school thing for a second. Let's just be honest, all right? Because I, I, there's a sign on the building that says Real Life Church. And, and I understand. There are people that you don't care about. And if you hurt their feelings, you're not worried about hurting their feelings. But the bodies we leave in the wake a lot of times are the people that are closest to us. Because we didn't watch our mouth. Because we got frustrated. We got angry. And it came out. And you wanted to grab it as it was coming out, but you couldn't stop it. It was already out. And so here's what I want to do. The first thing I want to do is I want to give you a tool that you can use according to Scripture that will help you. In Proverbs chapter 4 it says this, My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. And then he jumps to verse 23. In verse 21, 22, he gives him some good stuff. He gives him some really good stuff. But then he starts in verse 23 and he says, Above all else, above everything else that you do, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Everything that is life comes out of this inner part of your soul, this art of man. And so you better guard it with everything you have. And so here's the principle I want to give you. The world is going to come at you. They are going to say things about you. They're going to say things to you. But you guard against that knowing that the world does not get to define something that the Creator has already defined. And the Creator defined you as fearfully and wonderfully made. The Creator defined you as somebody that can be more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus our Lord. That's how Jesus sees you. That you were beautiful in His sight. That He didn't make any junk. He didn't mess up. There wasn't a moment in creation when He was like, oh, snap. Well, just send it on through. He didn't do that. Okay? That's not what He does. He makes things perfect. The way that they are intended to be made. And you go, but, but Vince, I've got some stuff. I'm not saying this broken world didn't have some stuff that you've walked through and then added to who you are. But I'm saying when you were formed in the womb and God knew you, He didn't mess up when He did it. It wasn't a mistake. And so you need to guard your heart because the world will tell you that your opinion doesn't matter. The world will tell you that you don't matter. That you are not enough. That your failures outnumber your successes. And so that's what you will always be known as. That you're either to this or not enough that. And it will constantly come at you with that kind of stuff. And so how do you fight against it? You guard your heart. Because the reality is we could wish we lived in a world where negative things weren't said. But the reality is it's not going to happen. You're going to, some, somebody today is going to run into a waiter or a waitress that's had a rough day and you are going to feel their wrath. And I know, well, if they give it to me, I'm going to give it back. Why? Well, because. Great answer. But I hope that's not what you're landing on. I think sometimes we show better restraint, better control, better pictures of Christ when we don't, when, when, when we're just kind. And the, the easiest way to confuse the world around us is to be kind and to use your words to encourage and to build up. And so now I want you to guard your heart and I'm going to quickly move into these two principles that I want to give you. 
And we're going to have a little fun with it here in just a second, all right? These two principles I want to give you, they're going to sound really similar, but they are different. So the first one is this. I want you to speak life-giving words to everyone you get a chance to. Speak life-giving words whenever you get the chance to speak life-giving words. Now here, this is the audience participation portion of the sermon. I want you to think for just half a second about the people around you. I look around, make sure you get a glance at them, who they are, and I want you to just think of something, and I want you to get, I want to get ready, get ready, because you're about to tell that person something awesome about them. All right, you're gonna just you're gonna tell them something they're great at. Now listen, don't you flake out on me and go, you're a great person. Don't do that. I want some detail in here. All right, if you're looking at your spouse, then it better not just be you're a good husband. No, no, no. Give them some detail. What are they good at? If it's if it's inappropriate, whisper it in their ear, all right? <laughs> don't speak that out loud, all right? We don't want to go there, but I, I, want, I want to make sure that we are understanding each other. You're going to speak to the person next to you, and you are only going to speak good. Siblings in the house, if your brother or sister is next to you, hear what I'm saying. Be nice in this moment. You can go back to being brother and sister or brother and brother or sister and sister later. Right now, I want you to be nice. I want you to say something positive. I want you to speak life-giving words every chance. Ready? Go. Are you all good right there? You good? Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to tell you, I've done this in all three services this morning, and my seat is the best seat in the house. Because, like, literally, you get husbands that look at me like, oh, God, Vince, what are you doing to me? <laughs> and they go for the immediate arm around the shoulder. Pull them in close. They just lean over and they whisper something, whatever it is. Let me just tell you, fellas, it's working, all right? Because I get to see the facial reaction when you say whatever it is you said. I am getting to see friends look at each other and laugh after they say something. I've seen ladies look at each other and be like, girl, yeah, girl, you said, oh, I feel good because you said that about me. It feels good. And listen, I don't want you, well, Vince, you made us say something good, so you set us up. Of course it's supposed to feel good. It doesn't matter if you're set up, because I didn't tell you what to say. You have the ability to say nice things if you will intentionally think through the process. The problem is we don't stop long enough to intentionally think through the process. We knee-jerk, and when we knee-jerk, that's when the crap comes out of us. And I mean that. That's when the stuff that we say is painful to the other people around us. But I want you to catch this scripture. Because I read through this, and like I've been doing this for 20 years now, and as I read through scripture, I'm not going to lie to you, sometimes I read over the scripture. Like I've read this a lot of times before, and, and so I, that, yeah, I got what that says, and I put it in my notes as I'm going to hit that one, that's a good one. But then as I started reading through it, I thought, oh no. I think there's a TikTok where there's a little song where they're going, oh no, oh no, the little kid singing that thing. That's what I felt when I read this and I slowed down and I actually read it. Because it says this, I want you to listen. There are zero suggestions in this verse. There are zero, you can do this or not. There are, it, this verse is all directives from God. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only, church say only, only. what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. Oh no. So you mean I got to base what I'm saying to people based on what they need? Yeah. 
And it's got to be wholesome and uplifting. Yes, here's the, the premise of this scripture is that whoever I'm speaking with, when they leave my presence, they ought to be better than when they came into my presence with the words that I spoke to them. Now, here's the flip side of that. I've heard this as I've been walking through this and even me and God kind of wrestled on this when I'm like, but God. God, sometimes you just got to tell some people. How many of you believe, like, you have that, right? You were like, no, no, sometimes you just got to tell them. God said, I didn't say, this verse doesn't say blow smoke up their skirt. It says that don't be, don't let it be unwholesome and make sure it builds them up. That other verse that says you speak the truth, but you do it in love. It may not be pleasant to hear, but it's still going to build you up when you hear the truth. And Christians, we don't get to back off of that simply because I know we live in a culture that says you can't hurt anybody's feelings. Sometimes the truth hurts. But if it's shared with somebody that loves you, it changes everything. Proverbs, another scripture says the wounds of a friend are healing. That, that wound of a friend that says, hey, you, you cut it out. It's not good on you. You know better than that. Don't act like that. You just watch your mouth. Don't be that person. If that comes from somebody in love, it comes from somebody trying to protect me, then I shouldn't have any problem with it at all. I don't know if you've ever had that friend where like you get together and there's a group of friends, there's always that one that's like gotta be the loudest person in the room, and they're gonna say everything to anybody, doesn't matter because the squad's there. It's you, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I know now you laugh too loud at that one, so. Somebody's got to talk that person off the ledge sometimes. Be a friend. Be a brother. Do that. Because this passage doesn't change anything. If I'm going to speak life-giving words to others every chance I get, and I have to do it every chance I get, because the Bible says don't let any, do not let any unwholesome speech come from your mouth. I'm going to read another verse here in a second that says that you and I will give an account of every, every useless word that we've spoken before God. How many of you are going to be there for a while? Man, it, it's a good thing it's eternity because I'm going to hog a lot of time up there. Because I don't think a lot of times. I don't stop long enough to go, hey, hit the brakes, Vince. If they take too long at fast food restaurants, I'm usually like chirping. I'll stand there and I'll get up to the checkout, you know, or get ready to give my order. And I've been in line for like all of seven minutes. And I'm like, hey, you guys, I don't know if you know it or not, this would be an amazing location for a fast food restaurant. <laughs> I know you're like, Pastor Vince would never do it. Yes, I would, and I do, and you need to pray for me. <laughs> but it's not who I should be. Just because I can doesn't mean I should. We see this a lot. We, we live in a world right now that we are so ate up with our rights that we sometimes forget we're redeemed. We so badly want to defend our rights to say what we want to say when we don't realize that some of the stuff we're saying we probably shouldn't be saying it's not benefiting anyone's heaven or getting anyone closer to it. Again, I'm not saying don't be thankful for your rights, but rights change. They change based on culture, and ours are, good, ours are changing. And so what rights you had yesterday, you may not have tomorrow based on whatever reason but it's going to change. But that's where I have to look at the line and go, God, you called me to be a believer. And that line is high above, far above, way beyond anything that has to do with my earthly nationality. Now, I'm proud to be where I'm from. I'm proud to be an American. And I'm proud that I was born here, that I live here, that I have the freedoms that I have. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to get in a screaming match with somebody I don't know over something that won't get them to heaven too little time for that so speak life giving words 
every chance you get. Last point is this. This is going to sound crazy because I thought I was crazy when I was writing it down. Speak life-giving words to yourself and to your circumstances. Because as I was writing this down, I, this, I, when I say me and God argue, I don't mean that I don't love him and he's not the boss and it goes the way he tells it to me to do this. When I, but sometimes I'm like, you really want me to write that down? You, that's, that's the direction you want to go with this? And yeah, I want, it's the truth. And I'm like, I don't want to be weird, Vince, or God. I don't, I don't want to be odd. I'm, people see me talking. I'm going to tell the church, talk to yourself. Yeah, they need to talk to themselves. I'm like, Lord, why do they, why, I, don't, I don't want to talk to myself. And then he comes back at me and says, Vince, the loudest voice you hear most of the time is your own. The loudest voice telling you that you're not enough, that you can't do this, that you're not equipped or don't have the right tools or you don't have the right gifting or you don't have this or you're too much of that or you're not enough of this that voice typically is not coming from the world around you it's coming from within you and so sometimes you need to tell yourself that no that is not who I am I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made by God I am beautiful in his sight I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus I don't have to be confused or afraid because the God I serve is with me no matter where I go. That is who I am based on the Word's definition of me, not the enemy's definition of me. Because see, I, I've said this every, every service this morning. I've said, I wish the devil would show up physically. Like I really do. I really wish that like in the morning, since I know he's going to be driving me nuts all day, I wish he would just roll up in the morning, hit the doorbell, so that when I open the door, boom, right in the mouth. I could just get a shot in. But he doesn't show up that way. He typically shows up right over this shoulder whispering in my ear. Saying you're not enough. You screwed it up again. You know people are trusting you? You know people are depending on you? I guess they'll find out, won't they? That's the stuff. The enemy whispers in my ear. Just like you. Some of you know and you can relate to the fact that the loudest voice that comes against you is the one that's within you. You can relate to that. So I said, God, I don't know if I want to tell people that I'm talking to myself or my circumstances this is because I, I got this verse and and as I read this verse I thought Lord I know this story and I know this is you telling the disciples this. this is what he says if anyone says to this mountain go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt it in his heart but believes what he says will happen it will be done Woo, that's good Go speak to the mountain. And I, list, I was reading that scripture and I wanted to get jacked about it and I wanted to get amped about it. And I was like, but God, come on. I know what it says. But I'm, I still have moments where I struggle speaking to my situation, speaking to this issue in my life, whether it be uh, anxiety or depression or whether it, be, whether it be insecurity or whether it be anger or whatever. Lord, just speak to the mountain and it'll be moved. And he said, yeah. And I'm like, just speak to it and it'll be moved. And Yeah, that's what I said. God, I don't think this makes sense. He said, it doesn't make sense, Vince, because you're spending all your time speaking about the mountain and you're not speaking to the mountain. You're speaking about your issue. I struggle with this. I struggle with that. Instead of actually going and fixing the fact that what's actually happening in your heart, you need to address that. Some of you need to speak truth to the stuff that's happening in you. This anger that you have inside of you, you need to get it remedied. You don't need to keep telling people, well, I'm just an angry person. Stop being angry. Well, it's not that easy, Pastor Vince. It's not if all you do is talk about it. But if you'll actually start speaking to it, you might find some healing. This is one of the things that I struggle with. One of the things that the Lord spoke with me about several years back. When I kept asking for help instead of asking for healing. Lord, just help me get through the day. 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 And God said, you don't need me to help me get through the day. I want you to not have to worry about the same issue tomorrow. 
So instead of praying for help, why don't you ask me to heal you from this? Some of you right now, you're sitting there and you go, well, my personality events. I just, no, don't blame your lack of ability to not speak on a personality issue. Because we can all change that. You can change it like this. I can't change my personality like that. Yeah, I can. Watch, you be mad at somebody and somebody call you right in the middle of it. Cussing, just screaming, mad, phone ring. Hello? You shut it off just like that. Trying to impress somebody, guess what you do? You work it out. You work it out. You change stuff. I'm going to change the way I speak. I'm going to do, you have the ability to change it, so don't just blame it on your personality. We're adults. And some things in us have to change. Some, there, there's some things that I used to do that I shouldn't do. There are words that I say that I shouldn't say. There are actions that I have that I need to take responsibility for. And there's no way, there's no place in Scripture that gives me an excuse to just say whatever I want to say. I, it's not in there. You won't find it. Well, the Bible tells me to be bold. It says to be bold in God's truth. Not in your offense. And so controlling our words, if you want to love on, you want to confuse the world, go be kind. Love them on purpose. With intentionality. Show up planning to love them. Not hoping that they prove to deserve your love. And see what happens. Vince, I don't want to, I don't want to get rolled over. I don't want people to think I'm a pushover. I don't, I don't want them to think that about me. Let me tell you this story about this guy. He ends up living his entire life without doing anything wrong. Entire life. He even had little brothers and sisters and he didn't do anything wrong. Lives his entire life. Teaches folks great things. And at 33 years, they beat him. Tortured him. Spat on him. Cursed him. And ultimately hung him on a cross. And the Bible says about this guy, you all know who we're talking about by now, that like a lamb led to slaughter, he opened not his mouth. Oh, he could have been bent. He could have got twisted really quick. You have no right to be, I haven't done anything wrong. The court case was a joke. You had it at night. You can't do that. It's illegal. The witnesses you brought against me, you stood me up with a murderer and a thief and you let the crowd choose who they wanted? That's my trial? I didn't deserve to be scourged and beat. 39 lashes or 40 lashes save one, which is what they did to Jesus before they put Him on a cross. He had every reason to start throwing rights in their face, but his real goal was redemption, not his rights. And he gets to the cross, and instead of spitting on the Roman soldier and cursing the entire planet, he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He spoke life. He spoke life. He spoke it to his situation Father it's finished it's done redemption is possible now he spoke it to us and I just want us to be that kind of church you say Vince I, sometimes it just slips let me give you this and then I'm going to let you go the Bible says in Matthew this is Jesus. He says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree evil and its fruit is evil. But the reality is this. A tree is known by its fruit. You are known by the things you produce, is what he's saying in this passage. And then he goes on. And he's talking to the Pharisees here. He says, you brood of vipers. He said, that doesn't sound very encouraging. Truth. Here he comes with the love. How can you speak good 
when you're evil. For out of the abundance of your heart, what is in you is the only thing that can come out of you. You realize that, right? It's the only thing that has the option to come out of you is what's in you. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks for a good person. Out of his good treasure brings forth good, but an evil person out of their evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, this is that Scripture that should rest heavy on us. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by our words, you will be justified. And by your words, you'll be condemned. I'm not asking you to change everything today. What I'm asking you to do is to think, to do it on purpose, that, that your words matter and they matter more if you're intentional with them. It may be new to you. It may not be natural to you. But to claim it's not you is not fair to the one who created you. This idea of careless words, of sharing careless words, of not stopping and thinking about what we say, how we say it. Well, that's just... No, listen, you and I are representatives of Jesus Christ. This world, as much as I love it, it is not my home. The Bible says that I am but a sojourner here. I am just traveling through. I'm a pilgrim on my way to someplace else. And this just happens to be my halfway point. And so my goal on this earth is to be a representative of that. Now, do I nail it? No. Man, I deal with so much insecurity stuff in my own head and battles in my own mind, just like a lot of you do. And God has to remind me, hey Vince, don't let this get out ahead of you. Sometimes you let this stuff get out ahead of you, overthink it. And I have to pull back. Say, Lord, teach me. Help me. Heal me. And He'll do that. But you've got to be real with Him. I want you to bow your head with me, church, if you would. No one looking around. And if we're going to love our community on purpose, if we're going to love the people outside these walls on purpose, a good place to start is where they'll least expect it. And currently in our culture where they least expect it, is with our words. I've got to work on it. We've got to work on it. But I want to pray for you. You say, Pastor Vince, this is something I don't think a lot about. I just I don't think about the things that I say. I don't, I don't try to be intentional, just whatever I feel, that's what comes out. Or if that's you this morning, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you so that the things that come out are of God. So that the things that come out are, are heavenly. They are beneficial. They are building up. Not smoke, truth, but truth shared in love. If that's you this morning, you say, Pastor Vince, I want you to pray for me so that my words matter. Would you just lift your hand and put it right back down? I just want to pray for you. I'm not going to come get you. I'm not going to call you forward. It's been hands all day. And so let's pray for each other in the process. Father, I thank you for your grace, for your mercy, God, for your forgiveness. Lord, you know I've needed it. Lord, heal us. Teach me to guard my heart from the words of others, thoughts of others, and to know that I am yours and that's enough. Teach me that, God. Teach me to speak life into people every chance I get. Every opportunity, God, help me to speak life. 
But Lord, when it starts to get overwhelming in my own circumstances and in my own mind, teach me to speak life there too. And to trust that you are a God who is able. And Father, we'll give you all the praise, all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen.